Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Dr. Tom Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. How many ready for the word today? And I do want to say a few words about those that have laid down their lives for the freedom that we have here in America. And uh, I wish somehow God could give revelation to those that speak against our military, speak against those that have fought for our freedom. Actually, for the freedom for them to run off at the mouth. Maybe that's all I need to say. Nonetheless, uh, I have a problem with that. And you mess with my flag, I'll take you down. Anyway, uh, I still can. Maybe I'm 80, but I still can. Amen. Bless us God. Bless God. Well, I'm starting a new series today. Uh, we've been talking about the value of the church, and uh, we haven't moved anybody off the couch that I know of yet, but... We tried. You guys got awful quiet on that. But I do believe in my whole heart that I am where I am. I have the family that I have. I have the wife that I have. I have the children that I have, the grandchildren that I have, and the great-grandchildren I have. And Aaron and April would agree, as they're almost into the fourth generation also here at Living Word, that it is what has happened and the attitude and the life style of God's church and God's house. And the power of the word that has worked in our lives. And today I want to talk about another power that I think we are overlooking and that we need to really get a hold of and reconsider in our lives. It's it's an old word. It's a word that used to be part of all Pentecostal movements and... uh, is, it, it is a foundational word, absolutely foundational to our faith. But for some reason, there's not a lot of talk about it. So I'm going to have you listen to this and kind of get a feeling because this, this opens almost uh, with a minute of just music. So just uh, allow it to get in your heart. Just, just go ahead and pr- play it back there, if you will. is one of my absolute favorite uh, songs of all time, and how this is done uh, just moves me. Be free from your burden of sin. Power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you over evil victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Sing along. There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Of the land, there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wise, whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you drink from? The fountain that flows, there's wonderful power in the blood. How many believe that? There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. That's enough. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Father God, for the blood. 
Glory to God. And I think we've got to get a hold of really some understanding in our heart that when it comes to the power of the blood of Jesus and what it has done, I mean, just stop and think for a moment that in order to have life today, we enjoy every day, something has to die. Nobody particularly likes that sound, but in order for us to have life, a broccoli plant has to die. Now, it doesn't work for me, because I don't eat broccoli. But a carrot has to die. In order for life to take place on this earth the way God set everything up, even going back to the Old Testament and looking at the very first thing that happened when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, God took an animal and gave the skins, and it was the blood that atoned. The animal's blood atoned for the sins of Israel for thousands of years in order for them to live an animal had to die every year. It was always the example of the lamb because it was the lamb of God. It is the picture from the foundation of Jesus being the lamb of God to pay the price that he might die that we might live. In other words, there was a complete picture painted from the foundation of time that through this process he might develop his bride for an eternity and that it would take the blood of his son to pay for the fall of mankind that we could live eternal. It is the blood that paid the price. I said it's the blood that paid the price. Wow. Wow. Why do we sing things like there's power in the blood if there isn't power in the blood? And so I've done a lot of research just looking at it, and we'll just lay a little bit of groundwork, but we know that in the beginning God made heaven and earth, and we know that he made the visible and invisible, but we also know that he made the visible for his bride to live on earth and enjoy the best life possible was his plan. And he made the invisible for anything that we might need after the fall, because it had everything before, but after the fall, he already prepared for it so that anything you need is already done in the invisible, waiting for you to believe God to go shopping and pick up what it is that you need today. So he made everything that is, so he's not making anything because it's all done. And so it is our responsibility to use faith and action to receive. I think about the story about the pastor, faith pastor, a priest, and a Presbyterian minister all were in a bus crash and they all died and went to hell. When they got to hell, the Presbyterian pastor said, I, I don't understand it. I've always said, I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, the only brass. I don't know how I got here. And the priest said, I don't know how I got here either. I got my rosary. I'm doing it regular. Got his little beads. Went to the faith pastor and he said, I just don't receive this. I just don't receive this. I just. And sometimes I begin to think that part of the problem as Faith, yes, we must believe God, but with believing comes action. So I've taught many times that you can believe for health, but if you eat junk and you don't eat what brings life, you're liable to die young, even though you're believing for health. Mm. Really messing with you today. And so we know that he created this whole place for the bride to live 
to experience, and he had to set up a program that he could have a bride that is uncreated. I talked about this before, but I want you to get the understanding of why this is important. Because in order to have a bride, he needed his bride to have the same type of blood, same DNA. Life is in the blood. I said life is in the blood. That's why Maureen and I do blood tests every six months. We do extensive blood tests to find out anything that needs to be changed or affected. And our doctor handles, well, you need this because you don't have enough of that. You have too much of this. I just got my report back from the doctor last couple of weeks ago, and he said, uh, are you 17? <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah. Uh, well, he said, you got a problem, though. And I've, I've never heard of anybody having this problem in my lifetime for an 80-year-old to not have enough cholesterol. Your cholesterol is too low. So Maureen's been feeding me fats and eggs and <laughs> deep fried shrimp and gentlemen. Got to raise my cholesterol up. Anyway. But life is in the blood. That's why I, we do the blood tests, extensive blood tests, because I want to know anything that might be going on in the blood, and I know how to read them and understand what we might need, and the doctor helps me with what we need and what we need to take as vitamins and minerals and so on. Um, and he's really saved our lives a few times because we were headed down some interesting roads, and I'm just thankful that he was able to catch it. I believe God is the one that works through him, and we're... Just about got him saved. He's Jewish. <laughs> Amen. He's actually sowed into Word for Winners. Amen. Amen. We've got a lot of people going to him now out in Hollywood, and we actually sent uh, a lot of people there, uh, and he's helped a lot of, a lot of people. He worked with uh, uh, Fred Price, Dr. Fred Price, and his wife, and the extended their lives quite a bit, and, and it, so he's an amazing guy. Anyway, so let's go to th this word in Genesis called Adam. Uh, Adam has its roots in the word blood. Interesting. First man he created. Adam is the way it's supposed to be spelled or pronounced, which is A-H-D-A-M. Now, we all know about the misuse of God's name and uh, using God and damn in the same sentence. We got awful quiet, isn't it? <laughs> and so, but that's D-A-M-N, -M, not D-A-M. Is that all right? But nonetheless, you should never use God and damn, D-A-M, in the same sentence because ah. Uh, is the release of the flow of blood, and dam is what stops the blood from flowing. If you take this and tear it apart, it's saying that when we speak positive, we release the blood of Christ and the power of it, but when we speak negative, we dam it up and stop it. Woo, that's pretty heavy. That's the power of the blood. This word, Adam, has its roots in blood and life. It has its roots in restoration through the blood. It has its, it ha, it has its name in uh, um, about four different meanings to it that, that bring life or extend life or actually restore life. How many times have people gotten transfusion? I get called, Lord, I repent. I, I need to go do that. You're right. But I get calls all the time, will you please come and give your blood? Because they know my blood is so good that they want my blood. They're, I'm not telling them they call almost every month. I need to go down and give blood because it is very healthy blood. I, it, I, have, I have so many red blood cells, they said that's why I tan red. <laughs> but the, li the life is in the blood. 
And so this Adam is a very important part of the word A or the forward thrusting energy that seeds the universe and Dam is what can stop it. So if we just from, this is like almost the whole gospel is contained in one word. The power of confession, the power of what we say. God said, let there be light. He gives us the example that when he spoke, did you realize that when he spoke, let there be light, there was no resistance? Darkness was and it flew. See, when you speak the word of God, there's no resistance. It can't stop light. Darkness cannot stop light. So the power of speaking God's word is so powerful, but we don't utilize it enough. In fact, speaking God's word is what gives us dominion and authority over darkness. Mm. Remember we said, preparation of the of the bride, and we saw in the first letter in the Bible, in was be it, and be it means the divine dwelling of the divine or God, and it's mentioned 240,000 plus times in the Bible, the house of the Lord. So how important is the house of the Lord? That'd be important for us. How important is it what we say? Where are we supposed to learn? How are they going to know except that it's preached, except in the house of the Lord? Amen. And it's where we gain faith is in the house of the Lord. And it is also in the house of the Lord that we realize faith is not enough without works. Works don't pay. It doesn't. That's not earning it. But it is works to work the word of God that we rest in. It is when we are building the kingdom of God is, is action. When we realize that we have to eat the right stuff to have a life. We have to believe for finances, but we have to work. We have to believe that the joy of the Lord is our strength, but we have to receive the joy. Come on, somebody. There's always something that works with it. I remember when I met with Donald Trump on, in 2012. Dr. Marina and I were there and prayed with him in his boardroom in New York. And I had a word for him, and I'm realizing... Uh, I almost shudder to think that maybe I shouldn't have said it. I don't know, but this is what the Lord gave me to say to him, and I said, for everything you gain, there's something you'll give up. Are we seeing that? Yeah. It's just interesting, the power of the spoken word. Power of any word you speak. If it's negative, it can stop the power of the blood. If we, if we can get that. Now, the reason that he, we, we read all of this about blood, or we read all, all of this about the flow of blood, and we, uh, the blood of Christ, and the price that was paid, and the, we talked about the cross, and they nailed his feet. Do you know why they nailed his feet? Because every drop of blood had to drain. Every drop of blood had to drain to the earth for our redemptive power. In the ancient Hebrew, the word blood means detergent. Now, if you can find the word detergent 3,500 years ago, that's pretty fascinating to me. A cleanser. It's the blood cleansing flow that washes us as white as snow, that gets rid of past, present, and future sin. It was the blood. See, when Mary, the angel came to Mary and said, Mary, you're going to conceive a son. She said, well, I don't know a man. I, I haven't slept with anybody. And, what, what? and they said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. It was this word of God and the DNA of God's blood that was deposited in the egg of Mary to produce Jesus, the Word became flesh. It gives us insight that when we speak as the bride of Christ, we speak His Word, we are sowing seed that has the power to produce. 
It has the power to produce life and life more abundant. When we sow the seed, his word consistently. The word, the Bible says in Mark, the word is seed. Hello? Amen. And even seed has to die before it produces. I said even the seed has to fall to the ground in its little shell and deteriorate the shell and then life springs out of the inside of that seed to grow into a plant. And a plant had to die to produce that plant. Are you getting why Jesus paid that price for us? Paid it with his blood. Now the reason that all of that took place is so that in salvation, when we get born again, John chapter 3 verse 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 God so loved the world he gave his only son, we, we understand but he said you're not born by the natural only but now you need to be born again by the spirit. Why is that important? Because you are now born again spirit. When you get born again, your spirit becomes all brand new. Your soul is still messed up, but your, your spirit is all brand new, and the word is to be working on your soul. That's why I sang the song earlier and got you into it, because that's a soul song. <laughs> because it ministers more to the soul which is where we need it to minister, hello? The power of the blood. So when Mary received, she received the DNA of Father God. The DNA comes from the Father in marriage, raising, bringing children. It comes the DNA, follows from the Father to the children. Are you here? And the, that DNA has complete, get this now, inheritance in it. Hello? Complete inheritance is contained in that. So when we receive the blood of Christ through salvation, born of the Spirit, by the blood of the Lamb, We receive God's DNA and it has eternal life in it. Your natural blood is going to die. When, when the heart stops pumping and that fluid stops moving, you dead folks, you are moved on to Christ's presence. In an instant, in a twinkling of an eye, you're in the presence of the Lord because you're born again and now living by his blood and not your own blood. And this blood is eternal because it can't die. Woo! Glory to God, somebody. Just think about the power of the blood of Christ. Now we're going to take this into all kinds of different scriptures in the next few weeks. And by the way, I will be here now for almost three months, I think. On Sundays, um, well, we got done with most of the travel. Our travel now is during the middle of the weeks, and we're back for Sundays for the most part. There may be a, a Sunday in there uh, if somebody calls. But right now, that's where it is, and, and I can finish a whole series, and I'm excited about that. So it is a, t it is a cleanser. It's the power of God to wash away the sin. Isn't it interesting that it's in the songs? I think next week we'll do the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are you washed? I, how many remember these old songs? Are you washed in the blood? The soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Did they know something back then that maybe we're missing? Just maybe. Maybe it's good to return to some of the foundational truths of the Word of God. And begin to realize and appreciate the blood of the Lamb. If you got anything out there, give the Lord a hand clap. I'm going to quit. Uh.
That's why Jesus was able to say, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life because of his blood. The blood of God. Father, we give you praise and glory. Let truth be settled in all of our hearts, Lord, and those things that are not true be washed away in the precious blood of Jesus. If you've ever received Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to pray this right now. You can receive the Lord right now out there online, wherever you might be. Just reach out for Jesus and change your destiny to dark, from darkness to light. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life and my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer, I'll tell you, you'll never be the same. God is faithful in an instant to change. Your desires will change. Don't let religion get a hold of you. Find truth, find the Word of God, and get into a good faith-believing, word-speaking church. We introduce to you Living Word Virtual Church Community. Each week, we come together during the live stream, chatting with each other through live comment sections. Then, during the week, our virtual church community reconnects in online share groups to discuss the weekend service and study the Word. To sign up, visit the Living Word Virtual Church Community page on our website. We'll see you there.